Hi, good morning and welcome to today's Products in Focus. It looks like most of the global markets have actually bounced off uh, yesterday's lows with the US 30 hitting 17,546, bang on that support level, uh, only to rebound quite strongly by the end of the session as it looks like the situation in the Middle East in regards to oil supplies and refineries is not in such a precarious position. Albeit there is 150,000 uh, Saudi Arabian troops on the border of Yemen, they have yet to enter the region uh, and there's uh, reports that the top leadership of the, uh, of the the rebels in Yemen have actually been killed in an airstrike very early on in the start of the conflict in that region. So what we're actually seeing right here is a very strong hammer formation on uh, the US 30. Um, we've not actually followed through this morning. You've got a, a potential resistance level at 17,738. Uh, the technicals are all quite neutral just now um, with the Germany 30 actually spiking up and UK 100 bit flat. The US 30 seems to be flattening out in the shorter time frames as well. So we're possibly going to get a bit of a consolidatory move today, albeit towards the end of the session if we don't get to see a bit, a bit more uh, momentum on the upside. Um, because it is the weekend and because there is a precarious situation in the Middle East, I wouldn't be that surprised if there's a little bit of a sell-off, but we do have US GDP figures due later on today. So looking at the UK 100, we're not quite as off the lows as much as what the US 30 did. We're buying it a lot more strongly. Um, we are above the 21 period SMA, Bouncing around that 6906 level there, and uh, not that far away, really, to be honest, from that 7000 level. So, give it another 90 points and be back above there. Uh, potential resistance at 6964 is still to come. The technicals are not so great, though. Uh, you've got a negative cross on the MACD, uh, but you are supported by the 21 period SMA in the short term. So, certainly seems to be that 6906 is going to be an important level for the UK 100 today. Moving on to Japan, very, very volatile session. Rebound yesterday, huge uh, doji formation that we've got today, uh, both on the upside and the downside. There was a note that came out from um, from BNP Paribas that basically highlighted that, that China uh, is in a very precarious position where a lot of the growth is unsustainable, we began to see some small cracks in the fundamentals uh, that are coming through. Uh, I guess there is worry there that at some point it's all going to come crashing down, but they're always worried about that anyway. And that's what's caused um, a lot of the uh, a lot of the seesawing in the Asian markets there. And a very strange formation to have that so soon after a hammer formation here, after a slight dip, but nonetheless it's there for now. Uh, though obviously that, that candle is not completed until 10 p.m. UK time tonight. Um, moving on to dollar yen. Now, dollar yen has uh, been quite interesting the last couple of days. Obviously, people were buying up the yen strongly on the back of the uh, the bombing in Yemen, only for that to reverse course. As uh, for whatever reason, it still seems to be quite precarious to me. But the the markets um, have taken solace from the fact that they believe it's not going to get that much worse. Uh, for now, uh, so we're on the right side of 119. 119 is going to be the uh, the potential pivot level. Uh, it's been bouncing around there for so long. It's oscillating around this 119 level. Uh, I really was hoping back here that we were going to get a breakout. That didn't happen. Then yesterday, it was looking like we were going to get a lot of. Uh, you know, the end was looking well bid, but uh, not that many um, traders obviously follow through with that. So, dollar yen yeah, not really that exciting right now. West Texas crude, however, uh, is still uh, all over the place. Uh, great session yesterday, it was up about 6% at one point. It's come off a little bit just now. Uh, on the intraday chart, it's kind of flattening out. Um, this is all very dependent now on what happens uh, with that Yemen, Yemen conflict. And um, news obviously that you've got Iran uh, for the nuclear deal. I think that's coming to uh, an end this weekend. And uh, if there is some sort of deal, and there's a lot of people who don't want it to happen, um, there is a fairly large amount of uh, Iranian oil that's waiting to flood the market, should that happen. And uh, with the uh, crude prices already quite pressured, that would add a lot more uh, pain for, for crude oil. But obviously that's not happened yet, and there's a lot of people who don't really want it to happen. Um, so the, the Iranian nuclear deal might still be uh, tied up for a little bit longer, and sanctions might um, play out. But should that happen, um, crude oil uh, is certainly going to be going through a volatile session. So moving on to gold, um, you can just see the huge turnaround we had. A flight to safety first thing in the morning, a very strong reversal as people started to put profits in that one position. 12.18 very firmly being potential resistance and that also coincides with the 55 period SMA with the other technicals still actually relatively neutral. Uh, we are in the middle of two ranges right now. So 11.86 as potential support and 12.18 as potential resistance and that also sandwiches between the 21 and 55 period SMA. So finishing up with your dollar and cable, um, 
if we start with your dollar, actually, we have actually seen a, a, a little bit of um, US dollar strength come back into the picture, pressuring your dollar back down to one spot, 0786, uh, which has been a support level from a couple of years back, actually, uh, that has been in play. It's been broken once before, uh, and that, that actually also coincides with the 21 period SMA. Looking at the other technicals, they're relatively neutral, and we do have US GDP due later on today, uh, and that might be a cat. If that figure comes out decent, and bearing in mind that most US macro data has actually come out pretty weak, um, if it surprises the market, you might get a little bit of a, of a nudge below that one spot, 0.786 support level. Um, otherwise, if it comes out pretty uh, pretty weak, uh, we could see a move back towards one spot 11. So finishing up with uh, GBP USD um, pressure again. Not a great candle um, for yesterday at all, especially when you look at the short term uh, potential resistance around about one spot 50. Um, the candle was obviously a lot more bullish until the US dollar started to gain a little bit of momentum, pushed the sterling back down, and looks that one spot 48.13 uh, as ever as again in play. And this is a very important pivot level because if we if we manage to break and close below that with some conviction, the next potential support on cable is one spot 42.43, and that's a lot lower than where we are right now. In regards to the other technicals, you do have a reversal signal on the slow stochastic, which should be adding a little bit of um, buoyancy to cable. That's not actually kicking in right now. We do have a bullish cross in the MACD, but you can see by the candle formations there that uh, pressure still remains. So in regards to the economic data we talked about, we do have a GDP due, a US GDP due at 12.30 UK time, uh, and that's obviously going to be an important um, an important figure uh, to look at in regards to the state of the US economy, obviously tie that all into the interest rates, blah, blah, blah. It will probably come in weaker than expected. And if we fa fast forward on to Monday, you've got German retail sales uh, and German uh, CPI um, due there as well. So some inflationary data could be quite interesting for Euro dollar traders. And you do have the US housing index at 3 p.m. UK time as well. So as ever, keep your eye, eye on the chart forum, make insights part of your late going forward, and join me again on Monday to find out what happened next.